Good Wednesday morning. Hey, it's Ice Age TV, and what are we doing today, huh? The dog thinks there's something else to eat. Probably that garbage right there, yeah. Yeah, so, Jesus Christ, can you follow my channel? I know. I mean, I know. You're like this guy here. He is out of control. This guy has this YouTube channel called Ice Age TV. He is so out of control. And you know what? I'm going to use that word, those words of the day, out of control. That's going to be my story this morning. Because for many that are watching me, you know, and those that know me, they'll be like, yeah, that dude is out of control. But before we get to that, let's just kind of evaluate something here. I don't talk a lot about this. And it's not about me, even though it is about me. Yeah, you've heard that conversation, right? But this is, this is sincere information. Do you see this car right here? Is that my car? It's not. It is in my name. I pay for it, but do I drive it regularly? No. The wife does. See this car over here? Is that my car? Well, yeah. Do I drive it regularly? No, it's the wife's car. Do you see this car over here? Is that car in my name? Do I pay for it? Yes. Do I drive it? No. See that truck over there I just bought that I buy it in my name? Do I, am I going to be driving it? Obviously not. I've been watching my channel. So there's just four vehicles. And I'm going to share something with you about... See that pretty big house over there? Actually, I planted a lot of trees. So you can't really see that house anymore. Because that's kind of a sad story. You don't know about that property across the way. How there used to be a big field across the way. You don't, you don't know the story of what's happened to my life. But we'll share with that information here in a second. But here's the point. For me, a lot of people see me buying all these cars, and and I get it. It can be very self-centered, you know. Come on, let's go, let's go, come on, let's go, come on, let's go. It can be very self-centered, you know, all about me. See the shadow there? Yeah, it's all about me, right? Well, yeah, but we're all we all have that in us. You know, anybody denies that, I think you're then in denial. I mean, what's the most important thing in your life, you or somebody else? I mean. Yeah, somebody else, but hopefully you're the most important thing in your own life because you're going to take care of yourself and do the right things. And we see that people don't take care of themselves and do the right things. So obviously you don't, they don't think they're the most important person in life. So here we go. See that FJ Cruiser right there? That used to be mine. The gentleman works for me. I let him buy that, and he got a nice deal out of that truck. Okay, that was many years ago. See that Ford Tremor truck? That's a company truck. So anybody drives it. My daughter drives it. The guy works for me. My wife drives it. It's everybody's truck. The Raptor, that's more personalized. Not really wanting to let that. That's a new purchase. The Bronco, my wife's driven that to Tennessee, and she's driven around it. It's not really her, her way of wanting to get around, but she can drive it. Now, here we come to the, the second episode of the F-150 Lightning. And look here. Yesterday, I got myself a nice, I can't get turned around properly, but I got myself a nice F-150 Lightning mug out of my sales guy. And I got myself a nice hat, F-150 Lightning hat, 50 Lightning, right? You know, and I woke up this morning thinking about this truck. Is this really the color that I would have ordered? It's not. Is this really a truck that I really would have been fixated on? It's not. <laughs> You know, and here, here's the Challenger. Yeah, you know, this is my fifth Challenger. We counted it last night. Five Challengers since 2014. Of scat packs to you know, SRTs to Hellcats. But what's really incredible? Nine Mustangs. I have nine Mustang purchases since 2018. Yeah, I just said that. Nine Mustang purchases since 2018. You know, you remember I talked in these videos how I go back and buy the same thing. I sell something, but I go and buy, buy the same damn thing right back, just like the Lightning truck, just like that Raptor out there. That's my third Raptor. You know how many Ram trucks I've owned? Oh my gosh. If I went through the list of the Ram product, it's massive. Yeah. Get the dogs in because. The dogs will run away as soon as they hear somebody up the street. Let's get them here in the office. Hey, great news here. F-150 is all charged up. Caterpillar's all 
charged up or is he? You can see a nice woolly black caterpillar late in the early fall. Isn't that usually an indication of a cold, snowy winter? Yeah, so kind of back to the conversations here. And here's the, the F-150 Lightning. It's black. It's not really the choice I really would have picked. It's a good looking truck. But I'm always, I always have ideas. So people that follow my channel, they don't know behind the scenes that I'm thinking about things. You know, I'm thinking about the future. And, you know, I'm sure a lot of people think that way. Let me get my paperwork here, get my coffee, get my USB stick for my, my, uh, yeah. So here's the dogs waiting for the, the master to come upstairs and they're waiting for me so I can start barking while I'm in the office here. And it's the morning schedule of getting upstairs and getting my day going. And yeah, I should just own a car dealership, right? I mean, sincerely. I should have owned a car dealership. You know, my true calling in life, yeah, my true calling in life, you know, should have been me being in the car business. But I surely believed, I, I didn't know. When I was younger, I didn't know as a car sales guy you could make 100, 200 grand a year. I didn't know as a GM of a dealership you could make a million dollars a year. But the thing is, it's a whole different lifestyle. And I've been blessed because I figured out when I was very young, I wanted to be an outside salesman. I figured that out after reading Harvard business books and just looking around and, I, and I'm out embellishing here. You know, I went in high school from thinking I'm going to be a truck driver because I was a very shy individual. People may not believe that, but I was very shy. I wasn't, you know, very quiet. Yeah, it's not hard to believe. And, you know, I had my suck group of friends and, you know, that was different. But outside of that social little network, I was very quiet and shy. So I evolved over the years into what I became a salesperson and a people person. But meanwhile, in high school, I thought I'd be a truck driver, you know, because I like trucks. And But then out of high school, I never thought about being a car sales guy or working at car dealers. And for me, I took the right path. Because for me, I've had so much more flexibility in my lifestyle doing things than being, you know, having to sit at a dealership waiting for somebody to show up by a car. And that's massive. I mean, that's, that's a lot of discipline. Maybe you just watch my channel. It's a car salesperson, a general manager of a car dealership, or even a business. You know, you have to sit there. You have to be there all the time. And it's very, very challenging. And what I am amazed is so many people do that their whole life. When they come to retire, they don't know what to do because they've, they've revolved their whole life of working six, seven days a week, being on call at any moment's notice. Because it's just the Murphy's Law as a salesperson. The minute you're getting ready to walk out the door and go do something, the guy, Ice Age Man, shows up dealership wanting to buy a car. Then you got to run down there. You know, so don't get me wrong. You know, I hope the car sales people are doing well. And, you know, that's great. But also, I know they put a lot of hours in. And in these GMs, they put a lot of hours in. You know, incredibly disciplined people to do that, to make a living. You know, people make fun of these people, but... At the same time, it's like until you do their job, you don't understand. You know, they're 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 in these dealerships all day long in the evening. Yesterday I was at the finance, and actually, a gentleman used to take care of me. Was at a directors meeting with the organization of uh, Coons, so I dealt with a, a new uh, person there, a nice lady that's been in this industry since 2006. And you know, she's worked for other big dealerships, and she was saying how. She used to have to work 13 days straight in one of these dealerships. Because on this one dealership, they were open on Saturday, Sunday, on the last weekend of every month. So the way the schedule worked, she literally worked 13 days. And I'm talking 8, 12, 14-hour days. I mean, this is just horrendous. Relationships are destroyed. I mean, I know of people that just have, you know, family relationships are destroyed, you know, because you're never home. I think the car business industry is a disservice to people as far as how it's structured because it's it's archaic. They need to restructure it to, to be able to give people a life, you know. But I don't know. Part of me is like it's an addiction on their end. I truly believe the car sales people are, are the opposite of me where it's an addiction to their, their trade and what they do. They're always looking for that deal and it's that, it's that physical, people to people, emotional, you know, uh, deal that goes down and the whole interaction I think is borderline an addiction that that's what they enjoy so all right so kind of going back to me you know I'm always kind of thinking about things and I was talking really about that house across the way well that house across the way used to be 
it was my parents' house, but I was a person that helped take care of it and pay for it. And and that home was built in 2000. And that was kind of a family plan. You know, when I bought this property back in 1991, I bought 10 acres of land. There's five acres next door to me, and my parents wanted to be close by to me back in um, 2000 along because my dad retired. And they, everybody lives in Florida. Every left me. Every lived here in Virginia, but every every moved to Florida in 1990, 91. But I didn't leave because I just had I just didn't want to go to Florida. So, and sometimes I think, yeah, I should have gone, but I did, and I've done very well being up here. So, <clears throat> what I'm radiating back to you this morning is, I actually pay for a lot of things that other people get to enjoy from my my success. So I know a lot of people watch my channel and they see these cars. But I sometimes think people don't kind of step back and think, well, yeah, but other people drive them too. Because I have a wife and a daughter. And if I had a son, you know, it would be the same story. And, and then I have an employee that's a personal friend of mine that he drives my cars. I mean, he's driven my GT500. He's driven my Hellcat. He's driven my Charger. He's driven like every car I've ever owned for the most part. And so, and then right now we drive the Mach-E, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. So something I'm just wanting to share with other people is I know a lot of people look at me and like this guy Jesus Christ he's out of control and yeah I, I don't disagree from what's going on here in this year this is probably the most out of control year to date of me just buying things left and right after I shed things a year ago but I've been kind of balancing it of getting things getting rid of things to degree and the year isn't over you know that's a whole other story it's like you know like well, you're up to 21 purchases this year, and then I, you know, it was, it was, you heard the conversation the other day. Yeah, I have 20, 20 purchases, but the year ain't over, and which it isn't. There's other things in the works. Yeah, so what people don't realize is for me, the out of control statement, you know, I think is pretty broad right now. If you kind of step back, and we'll kind of change the conversation for a second on that F-150 Lightning down there. I've got a plan on that, and we'll kind of go back to that in a minute. But, you know, I got the thing this morning. I wake up many mornings very early, and I start reading the news. You know, and, and look at the stock market. Stock market, the Dow fell 1,300 points yesterday. It dropped, I mean, 1,300 points at a dive? I mean, the stock market to me right now, it's out of control. It's, it's up, it's, you know, it goes way up, it goes way down. It goes way up, it goes way down. I mean, that, that 1300 one day, that's, you know, I said over a year ago, the stock market's going to crash end of 2022. I mean, yeah, the odds are I'm wrong, but so what? I'm just tell, throwing that out there as I think the economic challenges are going to prevail more than ever here as time progresses. I've talked about this in my channel. So I thought to myself, you know, yeah, people look at me, I'm out of control. Well, let's think this through. A lot of things are out of control. I mean, to me, more than ever in my lifetime, it seems like the drug overdoses, the fentanyl is out of control. To me, you know, once again, you turn on the news, what do you believe, what don't you believe? There's a war going on between the Texas governor and the New York uh, mayor, and then the uh, mayor of D.C. There's a war going on with the Texas governor because Texas governor is shipping up illegal immigrants that are coming across Texas and Arizona uh, in droves. And, and nobody seems to really want to, you know, handle that. I mean, once again, not going to be a political channel, but you have to ask yourself, more than ever, it seems that the illegal immigration is out of control. I mean, once again, I'm not at the border to witness all this and to know the real facts, but from the general news that you hear, uh, and sometimes you don't really hear at all, it's kind of kicked to the curb. So to me, that's out of control. So I just talked about... Uh, drug overdose is out of control. The fentanyl coming to this country is killing young people by the droves. It's like an airplane crash every 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 night. It's like 300 people every night in this country don't wake up tomorrow. That's that's radical. But you know, don't see a lot about that. You know, the suicides. You know, where the where are those statistics? I'm not really sure on that. With the crime, the, the lawless inner cities, it seems like. And once again, I'm not in the cities to know the facts. But it just seems like more than ever that it's out of control. You know, these these inner cities are challenged. If you look at the uh, the, the inflation, the price of cars, out of control. 
I mean, the most expensive in our lifetime of cars being extremely expensive and no discounting. That's disappeared. Look at the, uh, you know, food. Food is out of control. It's very expensive. Go out to eat at a restaurant. Extremely expensive. Go to the grocery store. It's out of control. Look at the uh, fuel prices and energy, you know, heating bills, gas bills. It's out of control. Uh, you look at Green Agenda. In my eyes, it's out of control. The Green Agenda is advancing at a very expensive rate to the cost of us. And, yeah, I'm not here to – I got EVs, but I'm not the Green Agenda guy. It's not what it's about. It's about me with change and technology and just getting to experience different types of vehicles and learn. You know, you can go through just a list. You go through a list of, uh, of viruses. Viruses were out of control. And then we have the, the vaccine mandates, which was out of control because a portion of the country wanted them, another portion of the country didn't want them. So it turned into out of control, you know, uh, governing bodies. And to me, government powers is out of control. I mean, you can just start going through the list. Of all the things right now in our society, more than ever, seems to be out of control. And, and you know, once again, I'm not going to turn this into a political channel, but I thought to myself this morning how people look at things and perceive things, and I'm getting some comments on the YouTube channel, and they're nice comments, and people are acknowledging, like, Jesus Christ, wow. You know, it's great information, and I appreciate it. Nobody getting nasty and being mean, which nobody has, but they just have kind of radiated like, wow. And I got to think to myself, yeah, I'm out of control. But at the same time, you know, I thought to myself, yeah, a lot of things right now are out of control. I mean, it is, it is, I mean, education, where we're hearing more than ever that, you know, the pandemic created such incredible hardships for the younger children and middle school, you know, the kids that aren't getting the correct learning skills because of, you know, the out of control pandemic that, you know, we couldn't control the virus and all the list goes on and on and on. And the different states having different guidelines and, you know, just all the out of control, whatever. But at the end of the day, others are you know, being hurt from this. And, and you have to say to yourself, what is going on? I mean, what is going on? I mean, housing is just, to me, out of control. Rent. Are you hearing about people are paying rent? Some people are paying, you know, 30%, 40% double rent. I mean, just beyond believable. And then wages. To a degree, wages are getting out of control. But that's just where all radiates back to higher price things. So there's so many things that I think is a good thing this morning is, you know, it's out of control. And, and for me as an individual, yeah. I know, I get it. You know, eventually you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, Jesus Christ, you know, what's the end result? So, so here's what's kind of going on with me. You know, it's so funny. I ordered two F-150 Lightning trucks last summer because my theory was I'll get one sooner than later from one dealer versus the other dealer because that same scenario played out with my Ford Bronco. And my Ford Broncos, that I did the same thing, but I ordered different packages and one for me, one for the daughter. And so, what's interesting is, you know, here I've picked up another Lightning after I just sold my Lightning, and I get all the people who are like, why did you even sell the first one? Well, when somebody offers you 20 grand more for a car you just paid, and you see how you can dump like six cars and get creative with that money with no real intention of buying that Heritage Edition Shelby GT500, no, that's a good, uh, that's a good point. The big reveal is 8 p.m. tonight on the Stampede YouTube channel for Ford is going to do the big reveal on the seventh generation Ford Mustang, which is now the S650 series. Right now I have the S550 series. That's basically what I've always owned. I just told you that I just figured out last night I've purchased nine S550 series Mustangs. Wow. And I have three right now. I have three Mustangs right now. If you count the Mach E's, I got five. If you count the Mach E's, I have 11. But I don't count those as Mustangs. You know, I'm sorry. Riding off the name. But here's the big thing. Ford's going to do the big reveal on the Mustang S650 at 8 p.m. tonight out of the Detroit Auto Show. So do they disclose that the Ford GT500 is no longer? Only Shelby American has made this claim. I showed that to you yesterday morning. So is Ford out of control? And in all sincereness, there's a big Ford... 
uh, dealers CEO meeting in Las Vegas, Nevada this week. How do I know? Because I know people that run these dealerships, and that's where they are right now. Yeah, you would have to say, they would say that, you know, Jim Farley, the CEO of, of uh, Ford, he is out of control. I mean, he, he's, he's out of control. He's forcing these dealers for no new inventory. It's all used inventory. It's crazy. When I go to Coons Baltimore Ford, I'm embellishing. You're not going to feel for guys. There's designated new car guys, and there's designated used car guys. The new car guys, they don't have anything. I mean, the new car sales at a Ford dealership, no, no. I mean, it is, it's, it's pitiful. I mean, I would guess, so, like, Coons, Baltimore, Ford, in a good month, they're going to sell, like, 400 cars. And, you know, good dealerships are selling three, 400 cars a month. I'd be willing to bet that 300 of those vehicles are used cars, if not more. So if you're the new car guy, as far as the manager of new car sales and the GM, you know, technically they, they kind of have separation of salespeople to a degree. I think it's changed. It used to be the days you call and say, the, the receptionist would answer the phone. You'd say, uh, car sales, and they'd say, new car or used car. I mean, think that through. If, if they're doing that now at a Ford dealer, you're, if you're the, only the new car sales guy, you're done. You're done. You're not going to have a job. So I think they, that's, you know, think that through. I just kind of thought of that. You call a car dealership anymore. Do they say which division do you want? You know, because back in the day, a Ford dealership would have 500 new cars on their lot. So they needed a designated new car section just to handle that. And they'd probably have two, 300 maybe used cars. Yeah, in the good old days, that's how it worked. Yeah, so I don't think that, I don't, I don't think, I think now when you say uh, car sales, I don't think the receptionist asks new or used. I'd be curious to call, just to call the dealership to see what they say. And that's something, the times have changed, out of control. But going back to the CEO of Ford, for these GMs, they think he's out of control because he shut down the dealer lot inventory. I mean, they hate it. These GMs think this is the stupidest idea in the world. You know, so does that business model continue to work? I think it is because I think that the board directors and the stockholders don't want giving away cars anymore. I think more than ever, Ford's making good profits because of this, you know, so-called shortage of supply. You know, as well as I do, you have to wonder, you know, and that's another thing, the, the oil market, out of control. Why do I say that? I read in great length today about what's going on with oil. And I've said it many times, the oil market is not short on oil. It's not. The IEA, the uh, International en Energy Agency out of Paris that oversees the OPEC, no, OPEC, you know, nation, OPEC oil companies or uh, countries and other free market oil countries, they keep tabs on all the oil being produced. Well, here's the thing. Back in February, they were telling all the stock traders and bankers that Russia was going to be 3 million barrels short. 3 million barrels short per day of bringing oil to the market. That's a total lie. It never happened. It never happened. So it's all smoke and mirrors of this barrel of oil going through the roof when the Ukraine war started. Russia never stopped pumping oil. And China never stopped buying it from them. And even though China's down, China's COVID, you know, COVID challenges has made that country, you know, slow down its growth and use of oil. And the other thing is, since green energy agenda is going through the roof, a lot of these European countries are converting back to oil to a save on energy costs. Because the gas, natural gas is getting too expensive. How about that? A green agenda accomplishment, right? So then, right now, now the IEA... You know, International Energy Agency based out of Paris. Now, now they're saying that they're speculating that the that they're going to get a, they're going to go ahead and the EU is going to go ahead and get a man manhandle the Russians on this shipping oil through embargo. Uh, they're going to you know they're basically going to shut down the capability of Russia having shipping oil through the seas because so they're going to cut off their insurance. So that if something happens to a tanker, these tanker guys are all on their own. If some spill comes, no insurance company's going to cover it for them. So that's the plan. But that's not happening today. That may cut their production down and sales by 1.9 million barrels a day. But that's just maybe plays out later this year. Meanwhile, OPEC is very 
upset. They're not happy because they're not going to play the game of pumping more oil. They already see that the oil use isn't what it should be. And they already see that Russia is hiding the oil they're selling. And they're already they're saying publicly they're going to cut production back. OPEC wants to cut production back to try to get prices of oil back over that $90. They want that $90 barrel oil plus to make it their sweet spot to make their monies. I talked about it yesterday. Barrel of oil is in the $80 range. You know, it's at $85, $88, $84, $83, $85, 88 So all the traders are now reading the IEA information. They're reading about the OPEC. You know, so the world, the world banks and traders are speculating on the future. And I've mentioned it so many times. It's a bunch of, it's, it's, it's out of control. It's once again, it's out of control. It's such misinformation that has driven energy prices, you know, but at the same time, it's the green agenda that wants these expensive energy prices for fossil fuels. They, they truly do. I mean, believe it or not, people are like, oh gosh, you're watching news. It's a no brainer. If you have dollar gas, why would you want an electric vehicle? If you have two dollar gas, why would you want an electric vehicle? You're not ahead. You know, the five dollar gas creates the thought process that, yeah, maybe you get an electric vehicle. And I talked about this a while back. There was like a 4% interest, like in electric vehicles two years ago. There's now like a 30% interest in electric vehicles. Well, you go two years ago, gas was cheap as all get out. Yeah, gas was, you know, because the, the pandemic, people weren't burning it up. They didn't use it. Where's that conversation of close to two years of all the oil not being used up and the carbon footprint was radically changed? I mean, it's not even talked about what we accomplished in that pandemic of just shutting everything down. Where did where that, where, where'd all that extra oil go? It was sitting out in cargo ships, tanker ships out in the ocean. You have no idea how many tanker ships are just sitting floating out in the ocean because they had nowhere to take the oil. Nobody was using it. Yeah, that's why the barrel of oil went, people forget, the barrel of oil went to negative 40. Yes, like negative 30. It had no value. You know, everybody forgets this stuff. It's ridiculous. So this is, it's just to me, out of control, out of control. Everything's out of control. So yeah, look at me and say this guy's out of control, but I think it's advantageous for a lot of people to start looking around going, you know what? More than ever, this country, and even to a degree, this world is out of control. And what is the tipping point that stops it? Just like me, what's the tipping point? You know, for me, I'm no idiot. If my business starts going backwards and I start losing profits and monies, yeah, all these car addictions, they start to disappear very quickly. That's the tipping point. Well, you overextended yourself. You exposed yourself. Yeah, you're the only one to blame. Yeah, I know that. I'm not here to... To blame somebody else for my addictions, you know, I've been down that road before. Yes, I've been down the hardships. So, you know, the message here is, yeah, th this country's out of control. And what's the tipping point where it stops out of control? Well, sadly, it's financial hardships. It's a hiccup. It's where people don't have the resources to go buy things anymore. That's when the whole thing starts to change. When the bank starts to say no, when the ice age man shows up the dealership and they say no, no and no and no and no, which you witnessed that in my Indian motorcycle adventure, the bankers at that dealership had, they had limited bankers to use. Pretty, pretty incredible, really. They have basically two bankers, three bankers to use out of their portfolio to sell motorcycles. And, you know, there was no, no, no. So, no, you can't buy a motorcycle. So I didn't. You know, I'm not going to spend $35,000 to buy something. That's ridiculous. People forget. If you go buy a car for $50,000 out of your checking account, that's $75,000 burned income you just gave the uh, the dealership. Yeah, you have to make seventy five dollars at least to, to get $50,000 netted to you at best. So you just spent seventy five dollars People don't think that through. What they don't understand about me is I never keep my car. So if I buy a $100,000 car... If I keep it for a year, maybe two years, yeah, maybe put 20, 10, 20 grand into it, but then it's gone. I didn't stay the whole duration and spend that $100,000 for a car. That's the challenge. You know, that's kind of how I think and operate. So now going back to the F-150 Lightning truck, which everybody witnessed that yesterday. And, you know, I have another F-150 Lightning truck that I just mentioned on order. And, you know, it's been a conversation, John works for me, that maybe he'll take it, but I don't know. So I got to think this morning, I think the smartest thing to do is my Mach-E is getting a ton of miles on it. And I really like that Mach-E. 
And I'm thinking, you know what? He's such a great friend to me and great relationship with me and been very supportive of me to help my business grow. And he's been a great guy. And I think I'm going to switch him over to that F-150 black truck today. You know, that F-150 black truck just isn't, it's nice. But for me, it's all about the business. I have a business to run. And, and yeah, in all sincereness, the amount of money we burn up in fuel is basically a truck payment. I mean, I'm not embellishing here. You know, for that car that's driven around every day, it's simple numbers. You just take, in my business, conservative number. We go 150 miles a day times, just to say, 22 business days. That's 3,300 miles. Now, if you're working on one of my trucks, let's just say divided by my Raptor, 18 miles a gallon, 183 uh, gallons of fuel times for premium, we'll just say $4 in fuel, that's seven thirty-three. That's seven hundred and you know fifty bucks, give or take. You know, in fuel it costs. But way it works also in my business is if the gentleman here works for me, then then that then he gets paid like sixty-eight point four cents per mile. Okay, so for him, one hundred fifty miles times twenty-two days, thirty-three hundred miles times point sixty-eight five a mile. That's $2,200. So that's really what goes on more than anything is for my guy works for me, when he drives his truck, he ends up being paid $2,300 basically for riding around his vehicle. Well, like I just gave this use from scenarios, it's a no-brainer. He rides around on my company vehicle in my truck, electric vehicle. You know, I've already, I've already well paid the truck and insurance and everything else. So for me, where I'm today, and I shared with you earlier, I buy a lot of cars, and people never stop and think that, wait a second, but this guy doesn't drive all those cars, which I don't. Other people are driving these cars. And I haven't even talked about my father and brother. So you saw the Maverick in Florida. And that's on our discussion. I think that car is going to end up being up here, or I'm going to have to sell it. My dad, you know, my father's on a pension. And my mother, they're on Social Security and pension. They can't afford this high... You know, rising inflation challenges. You heard my dad yesterday in the conversations and stuff like that. And I don't know, can't remember if you heard the, his, he's on a six month eye exam. And once they say his eyes aren't good enough to drive, he can't drive anymore. So we realize or not that Ford Maverick truck, that truck, I pay for that truck. You know, that's, that's, I help my parents. You know, there's a boat down there in Florida that I bought. You know, there's a long story to that boat that, yeah, it's my dad's boat. Yeah, it's my dad's boat, okay? Yeah, well, I made that all happen, which I was very generous to help my father and brother out because we all grew up around boats, and that's why I did it. Nothing lasts forever, especially if you have older parents and family. And then we have a Ford Ranger down there. My brother's driving now. Well, who pays for that? You know, so, I mean, people don't realize that kind of watch my YouTube channel, and it's not me embellishing. It's just me sharing with you information that some people may think, oh, this guy buys everything. I have motorcycles. You know, my brother has a motorcycle in Florida. Who pays for that? I pay for that. It's a Harley Davidson. You may have seen that video. And I had another Harley Davidson prior to that for a few years. Okay. And then I sold that one. It's pretty pricey. And I just wanted to get out of that one. The other one's not too bad. I can justify that one. But then I have friends that ride my motorcycles. We'll go motorcycle riding. If they're an experienced motorcycle rider and they know they can handle the motorcycle, they can go motorcycle riding. That's fine. So I share my wealth. What people don't understand is I share my wealth. And in that house over there, I showed you earlier, yes, I used to own that with my parents. I used to take care of it. When my economic hardships came in 2008, we kept a house for about another two years. Then I crossed the bridge, and I was just like, <clears throat> it's, not, it's not worth it. I mean, I really don't want the house, and I want to go do everything in my life besides babysit properties, which I did that. For 20 years, believe it or not. So, Jesus Christ. So, anyways, just wanted to share my ideas and thoughts. And, uh, and like I say, that 150 Lightning truck, I think this morning what we're going to do is so I'm going to swap that out on the Mach-E. The gentleman that works for me, he's had mixed feelings with an F-150 Lightning something. And now, you know, why don't we go ahead and let him start driving that? So, he likes that. And I've got an F-150 Lightning antimatter coming in. And part of me says to take that truck and let him have the black truck. So, you know, we'll just have to see, evaluate. So, anyways, everybody, appreciate you watching my YouTube channel. and appreciate you supporting it. And any friends that you know that like to watch a crazy guy. I mean, I don't think there's any other YouTube channel out there of an average guy that's accomplished what I've accomplished in one year. Hasn't been intentional. It's just who I am, the car addictions. I talk about it. 
So uh, hit subscribe, share the channel, and, uh, and more information coming your way, more adventures, and uh, thanks so much, and have a blessed day.